All right, chaga tea is served. I founded Birch Boys when I was 15. I uh, basically learned about chaga from my grandmother and I just mowed her lawn and I went inside to get something to drink because I was thirsty, it was a hot summer day. And I opened up a refrigerator and I found this big jug of what looked like any regular iced tea. So I poured myself a glass of it she was in the living room and uh, she came in and she saw what I was drinking and she just like started laughing at me and told me I was drinking a mushroom. And at first I thought like, you know, she was losing her marbles or something because like I didn't have any idea that mushrooms were safe to drink or that she knew how to safely identify mushrooms, I should say. Um, but of course, you know, she was right. She told me all about it. And she pulled me into her backyard where she actually had a birch tree with chaga growing on it. And uh, she told me all about it. She taught me about its benefits and told me about its history with indigenous people in the region. And uh, it was just really cool. But then a few weeks later, I was out at Fish Creek campgrounds and I was just looking for firewood in the woods and, you know, looking for birch bark, that kind of thing. And I looked up and right like eye level as I was kneeling over I saw the chaga and uh, I started looking around and I started seeing it everywhere and uh, I couldn't help but pick it you know I knew it was the stuff my grandmother told me about and she said specifically if you see any you know let me know so uh, my other grandmother got into it as well it became a whole community thing in the adult center with the elderly people in Tupper Lake and uh, we literally, you know, I remember at Fish Creek with my grandmothers and family, like, you know, with her, their canes, like, picking it up, hitting it off a tree. You know, we asked the DEC officers if it was okay, and they were like, sure, I guess, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can take a... Whoa. You want to move that over to the tee? Move the stump right over yeah. to the tee, move it here. Oh. <clears throat> my grandmother used to go to these farmer's markets and Adirondack festivals because she would knit. Mittens, uh, pot holders, scarves, and sell them. And she kind of snuck me into a farmer's market that was going on at the Wild Center. And uh, that was the first time we ever sold chaga tea. As a 15 year old kid who was mowing lawns as my you know, side job, I made $300 in three hours. And that really was the day that started everything. I knew right then and there, this was my like, upgraded lemonade stand. You know, I had lemonade stands when I was a kid as well. So uh, I just started going to every farmer's market I could. Uh, I crank meat grinder that I found and, you know, just piece by piece tried to figure out how to improve and be better. I, uh, the, the day I got my driver's license, I drove to the county office in Malone and got a DBA for the business and they kind of surprised me when they said, what do you want to name it? So just kind of as the first thing that came to my mind, I picked Birch Boys. And I'm so glad I did. But yeah, I just kept at it. And at college, I realized how far I could actually take this thing. I met a kid named Josh Parker who had a maple business. He was much more developed than me, but we became really good friends and bonded over the uh, prospect of a maple chaga tea that we wanted to bottle together and it never ended up happening because he, he got so busy and he ended up going on Shark Tank while we were in school and um, it was kind of our experience together and uh, that whole kind of elevated level of thinking that just made me realize I was going to pursue it and then uh, one thing led to another I went to business plan competitions. I raised sixty thousand dollars, and that's when I debuted Chaga tea bags on my uh, 18th birthday at a, a trade show in Saratoga. Really, just uh, it's been a part of who I am for six years now, which is in, kind of incredible as a young person, you know, with this business. Um, and a perceived lack of inexperience that I have to deal with all the time, it's kind of now even surprising me, like, holy shit, it's been six years.
And talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, the region of where you are, you know, the Tupper Lake, the, um, you know, the North Country, and, and why this is so important to have a young business and have an entrepreneur claiming stake here. Yeah, I think that's incredibly important because there's a drought of young people leaving this area. And, you know, I surely would have been one of them if I wasn't capable of finding my own thing, you know, something new to do in this region because there's not a ton of opportunities. There's not a lot of things that people are drawn towards besides nature. And I thought, you know, what a cool thing it would be to embody that. It's always been what I've loved, but to also just bring some fresh energy and set a model of a new market for sure. Um, it's cool to kind of see I'm getting some recognition for that now too, because, you know, when you start, everyone is like make, thinking it's silly, right? And every entrepreneur I imagine faces that. But that lack of open-mindedness here is uh, really powerful when you're growing up. And I think that just like being bold and uh, deciding to pursue something in a region where it feels often like you can't do anything is uh, something I'm very proud to have uh, set a standard for. So, and, uh, and of course, you know, the mushrooms come from here too. The other part to that is that uh, this whole mushroom phenomenon that's going on in the world in the rise of the mushroom industry, um, the Adirondacks don't typically get much credit. You know, they say, oh, chaga, is, it's native to Siberia and Russia, blah, blah, blah. What I say is it's actually incredible, whether it's the artist conch mushroom that you draw on. There's chaga, polypore mushrooms. It's a category of mushrooms that grow off the bark of trees. The Adirondack in uh, Iroquois, in indigenous language, means bark eater because of polypore mushrooms. I'm really excited to show a history that just exists that hasn't been told and uh it's just exciting you know and i grew up in the 80s and i'm sure is maybe not so much for you but growing up most people just think of the like canned mushrooms yeah your pizza mushrooms how exciting is it to and you know i mean it's a short couple decades we've gone from shitty to unlimited almost possibilities now it's like almost a reverse yeah. Going back to the nature, how exciting is that? And, and talk to me about like people's experiences with mushrooms have broadened. Yeah. You know, it's funny because people think they're the most hilarious person in the world when uh, they ask if the tea is going to get them high. And they, you know, it's like your typical dad joke in it with his friends. And it's actually getting to be really annoying because. Uh, there's so much that's unknown about mushrooms, and finally people are starting to open their mind to them um, and just open, open their mind to the reality. Think about this. There are three major kingdoms of life, plants, animals, and mushrooms. Now imagine if anyone said to you, I don't like plants, or oh no, I can't do animals. How often do you hear people say that about mushrooms? Okay, so, um... Talk to me a little bit about the, the, how important it is that you're sourcing this stuff from the Adirondacks. Because I think for me, that is one of the coolest things. That's why I've always followed you is like this stuff is from hikers. It's from loggers. It's, it's giving a market, essentially. You've built a market for somebody, and it wasn't here. Yeah. I definitely think the fact that we harvest our, our chaga and our other mushrooms wild here in the Adirondacks is important because there's a few different benefits that it has. One, you know, I personally wouldn't be able to do this um, just consciously if I wasn't sure where the product was coming from. And uh, in the industry right now, uh, when 90% of the chaga in the world comes from Russia, uh, it's imported, you know, pre-ground. And uh, truthfully, if you actually go into this as a buyer, looking for chaga, looking on Alibaba, there's some things that really make you think twice. You also see some weird inconsistencies in, in the product itself. And a lot of our customers, you know, 
say things in the comments and leave reviews like, wow, it's real chaga. And I'm like, what does that even mean, right? Um, that shouldn't be a thing. So what is fake, what is not real chaga? That's what I'm wondering. So uh, I think the Adirondacks also lend themselves to tremendous growths of chaga. You know, there may be chaga in other places of the world, but it doesn't get the size that it gets here. It's absolutely remarkable. You don't see pictures of this stuff online that can even compete. Whew. Okay, so uh, talk to me about the, that it's the size again and how awesome mm -hmm. it is. The birch trees, the types of yellow birch trees we have here and how big they are, they just lend themselves to these massive growths of chaga. You don't find anything like this in the skinny birch trees of uh, Siberia. The other thing that I think is important is the fact that you're, sus you're supporting the sustainability of the region um, and, and you're supporting research on mushrooms. Uh, we're basically tracking the location of every single mushroom we harvest so that we can understand chaga's life cycle better. Um, we'll understand the life cycle of mushrooms in the region and collect research that just you know no one knows. There's this question to the sustainability of mushrooms and you know, we know chaga will regrow if you leave some behind, but as ter in terms of, you know, when a tree is infected with a spore, you know, how long that chaga exists within the inside of the tree, to what, when in its life cycle it bursts out of the tree, to, to how it even, you know, drops its spores at the end of its life, these are all things that are unknown.